I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Welcome to everyone to our Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024 regular Lincoln County Commission meeting. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome all of those that are here in person, and I'd also like to thank those that are listening or streamlining our broadcast today. Uh, to begin with, uh, is there any public input on the approved agenda? If not, do I entertain a motion? Move to approve. Second. A motion by Landine, second by Schmidt. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Landine? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Jibben? Yes. Thank you. Next, is there any public input on the consent agenda items? If not, I'm entertaining a motion for that. Move to approve. A second. A motion by Aaron, second by Landine. Is there any discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Commissioner Ahrens? Yes. Landine? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Jibben? Yes. Thank you. Let's move on then to our regular business. Um, first item is uh, Mr. Floyd. As far as the uh, highway department is concerned, um, again, a proposal for a consult to begin design engineering for a roundabout at the intersection of County Road 116 and County Road 105 to be constructed in 2026 for a fee of $97,000 approximately. Terry? Yes. Uh, good morning, board. Terry Floyd, Highway Department. Um, again, uh, here to uh, uh, get permission uh, to start uh, design on uh, this inter intersection project uh, it's scheduled for 2026. Um, plan is is uh, we can start design on this thing this year, and then hopefully by November December of next year we'll be able to go to bid with it for construction in 26. So, so the, both of those roads are county roads, correct? Yeah, this is the one that's just uh, north of Lennox, two miles. Two miles north of Lennox. Yep, on old, old in other 17. Words, uh, yep. 17 that used to be known as in the Klondike. Yep. And 116. Yep. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, at this time, what board action are you asking for? Looking for approval to uh, begin design on this. Uh, with the, the design fee is going to be $97,444. That isn't the construction fee. No. Okay. No design fee. Big difference there, isn't this there? This is for engineering. Yeah, so. Engineering. Okay. All right, before I ask for a motion, is there any public input on the matter? All right, um, I guess are there any questions for Terry? Terry, a couple yes. questions I got. First of all, thank you for bringing this up. Um, it's probably important that we get to designing better <laughs> intersections at some places in the county I saw last week in Turner County, there's a pretty bad accident at uh, ninth intersection of Highway 19 and 44. And um, that's been a bad intersection for a number of years. Um, I don't know what the crash rating is here. I think we've talked about it before. Um, in fact, I think I've had a, a family member of a client who got in a pretty bad accident at this intersection. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, doing something about this. Uh, one of the questions I have, though, is I get a number of comments from people about the um, roundabout that's at the intersection of um, Louise Avenue and, uh, what is it, 110? Uh, no, 106. 106. 106. Yep, 271st Street. And one of the comments I get from people is um, they their perception or their feelings are that the shoulders are not broad enough over there um, or that sometimes they feel like, you know, it wasn't designed wide enough. Now, without getting into the, all the engineering and all that, I assume at this intersection there's going to be a lot of truck traffic and a lot of farm equipment traffic. What 
you know, what can you say to those folks that kind of have those comments or criticism? So, so this was uh, probably one of the big talking points when we when we did that uh, intersection up there originally back in uh, 2018, I believe it was, and uh, and and they were saying that trucks uh, trucks are going to have a tough time getting through that intersection up there, but um, and we and we have we sat up there watched um, many long trucks go through that. We've seen them uh, doubles pull go through there um, with no issues. Um, so the one that we're going to be constructing now, I believe, is going to be slightly larger. Um, it's still going to be a single lane roundabout, but it might be slightly right, real larger on the diameter of it. Um, and then the one, the one major difference that we're looking to do on this one that we did not do on on the one on 117 is um, we're looking to do concrete on this one all the way around it, um, and then maybe probably have blacktop shoulders. Uh, and I know one of the things up there is, is it seems tight on the on the edge, um, but again up there we have gravel shoulders and. It doesn't matter where you go on, on, on an intersection anywhere, whether it's Township Road or whatever, um, if, they, if the shoulder is there for them to drive on, they're cutting the corner to drive on it. And, and I know several years ago, well, it's been many years ago, we had the same issue. Um, it's west of the interstate on 106. And we kept paving out a little bit each year, every other year, trying to keep them from cutting this corner. Where, and because they always, once they start cutting the corner, they chuck the gravel out get a hole there and it gets really big. So we end up paving out, paving out. And next thing you know, we're straight up and down on the edge of the road with a pipe. And it's like, we can't keep doing this. People got to keep over, you know, but. You could uh, pave into the ditch and they'd be in the field. They'd be turning there. Yes, they would. <laughs> so, uh, but that's something that'll be considered on design on this. Um, like I said, I believe it. Like we're, we're, we're looking to do concrete in, in the roundabout, the whole thing. Uh, I know one of the things we have an issue with uh, up on the uh, Louise one is uh, having a blacktop. There's a lot of turning traffic on it all the time. And I know this year we did a micro on it to help, uh, to help that get that to last longer. But um, when you have a lot of turning traffic on asphalt, it tends to just push stuff out quite a bit. So uh, we're going to be looking at doing concrete on this one. And like I said, I'm, my guess is we'll probably end up doing grout, uh, some asphalt shoulders on this one too. So, Thank but, you. Appreciate I think too, when, you, uh, when it's winter and you start snow and you you kind of get squeezed a little bit then on those yeah i i think we're we're kind of going to go into this one uh, maybe with a little bit of a different design hopefully um to try to alleviate so it won't catch as much snow i know that's one of the issues we have on the one on 117 but um is uh, it, it always seems the the south side seems to catch a lot of snow and it, and it comes out but um, again, up there, typically we got a couple trucks running that route up there. Um, again, we'll have to modify our, our truck routes uh, for snow on this one as well. But um, you know, Terry, that that's going to be that's a huge amount of traffic that goes on 117, and you know, in the morning, come all mm -hmm. Lennox comes out, and you've had to put pads down. Or, I mean, had to, but uh, you had to put a bunch of asphalt down because I think you did. Um, mediation or whatever you want to call that but yeah so so yeah we just we 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 end up milling out a turn lane um uh and uh repaving that back in there uh just because it was and it's and it's one of those kind of weird things when you when you do a paved job repave you know that's right where the seam is met you know and sometimes if you don't get that seam just right you know it'll 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 cup and it'll hold a little bit of water and once you get that that happening and then it it just continues and continues to deteriorate the asphalt when you have that moisture getting in there. And 17 was a, a state highway. We tried to get a three-way stop, and uh, they didn't go anywhere because they had a rule that no one was killed there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I will say, you know, uh, again, we had uh, IMEG down here a few months ago, I believe it was, and, and they gave us the results of that study, and we looked at multiple options, uh, cheaper options of, of – um, trying to make this intersection safer, uh, more functional, um, but but again, I think I go I go back to you know I don't I don't think we we spend you know half of what we're going to spend now and then five years later we got to spend twice as much money just to fix it the right way you know so like I said I think the and and again you know we looked at uh, four or five different uh, alternatives on this as far as building out this intersection. And the one that's going to carry us into the future the longest is going to be a roundabout. So. Mr. Chair, are you ready for a motion? Yeah, I'm ready for I'm a motion. I'll so move to approve the uh, uh, hiring 
for the engineering study for the roundabout on 116 and Highway 115. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Schmidt and a second by um, Aarons. Is there any discussion? Alicia, call roll one, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Landine? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Jibben? Yes. Motion carried. Next. Alicia, will you read the second one that our highway superintendent has? Oh. Um, uh, highway superintendent requests board action to approve the highway superintendent to hire uh, IMEG to do preliminary engineering for structure 4260044 uh, for permanent mitigation through this South Dakota Emergency Relief Program for a fee of $130,814.36. All right. So this one here, um, this here is the, this structure is the outlet of Lake Alvin up here. Uh, we just had the emergency repair completed here probably a couple weeks ago uh, on that structure. Uh, and I think I mentioned last time when I, when I brought up the emergency repair cost to you guys um, that the state um, had asked us about doing some mitigation work on this uh, since this is a continuing problem. Uh, so the, the state uh, has uh, uh, given us the green light now uh, to go ahead and uh, do mitigation on this. And then the first step of that is going to be doing a uh, hydraulics uh, on this, an uh, H&H on this, uh, do some preliminary engineering to go in on this uh, to find out what we can do for a different different structure in this place. So, so hopefully we won't have this topping of that road anymore. So um, this is the start of that. Um, and again, uh, the mitigation is going to, I think we have about, $3 million, $3.5 million or something that we're allocating or we're trying to get allocated out uh, for the building of this structure. Um, and again, this is probably looking 20, 26, 27 area to build uh, is what we're looking. So, and again, so this, exactly, this is going to... Where exactly is this from the area that was repaired? Uh, it's that spot right it's there. It's that spot. Yep, yep. Yeah, we I, got, I right. went on that the other day. Will there, will there be any guardrails or something ever put up It depends up on what we're going to put in there for a structure. And again, that's something we can add in there. If, if, we're, if, we're, just, if we're doing a box culvert, um, I don't know. It, this, this could be a bridge. I mean, it might be a bridge. And if it's a bridge, then it would definitely have a guardrail on there. But uh, again, I think anything that we can do um, as far as mitigation, where we change these structures out um, or adding adding pipe or whatever we're going to do, I mean, we can always add that into the project for safety. Is this being reimbursed, Terry? Yeah. So so the costs on this will be 81% uh, uh, um, reimbursed through the, the emergency relief program through the state. So, and I did attach on here, uh, basically it's the, um, uh, it's the email that I got from um, Austin Weiss from the DOT, uh, from the Emergency, Man Emergency Relief Program. Uh, they've already assigned a PCN number on this project. Um, just, I just wanted to make sure we had proof that, that they are green lighting this uh, for our goal, so uh, before we spend this money. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I you know, this is part of my district and it goes into yours. And I've spent a lot of time with those people who live next to Lake Elvin. And I've listened to the old timers out there and they've told me, uh, you know, this, the, the design out there goes all the way back to like the depression era, 1930s. Like you see that big, basically the road is on top of a big dam. Mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Big big berm of dirt. And a lot of people, none of us are engineers, but you know, a lot of us think think we should be because we stayed at Holiday Inn last night. <laughs> and we say to ourselves, well whose idea was it to just dump a bunch of earth right there and create a dam? Well, I mean it was the most at the time it was the most effective, efficient way to build a road. But with all these weather events now, uh, all this flooding, people are starting to say, well, how come there's not more room for the water to go underneath the road? Mm -hmm. And um, what Terry is getting at and what I've heard from some of the folks just informally at the state is there, there's the potential that uh, study could come back and all that dirt is moved and you're looking at some kind of tension or span bridge there where there's no dirt underneath there anymore 
there's just air air and then all the way down to the ground <laughs> now again i'm not i don't know what the results of this study are being but i've talked to these people informally and they've suggested you know there's there's a number of options here but all the options include there being more space for water to move under that big earth berm and cuz you know we had i mean just it's important to note we did have one fatality out there now it was indirectly related to what was going on but nonetheless it occurred because of what was going on and he lived right out there at Lake Alvin too by the way so um it's good that we're getting this going thanks Terry so is that something you'd want to share with IMEG but oh, whatever they whatever they need where I'm yeah. willing to talk to them about sure any other questions for highway superintendent uh, any public input on this matter? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Aaron, second by Landine. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? If not, call the roll then, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Landine? <clears throat> yes. Schmidt? Yes. Jibben? Yes. Motion carried. Next, that concludes, I believe, our uh, regular business opportunity for public comment. Any public comment here today? All right, none. Any commissioners want to report on anything? <clears throat> I will uh, say that last Saturday I attended the uh, Lincoln County fall kickoff at our fairgrounds. And uh, this was something that we um, hosted. It was an open class for um, those in 4-H in our adjoining counties. And uh, we had very well attendance. And again, uh, these were all club calves. Uh, they were all brought in. Um, these are calves that uh, obviously will be back at the fairgrounds next uh, August. And um, again, uh, the judge, I believe, was from South Dakota State. And uh, it was a really good experience for uh, it looked like those that were presenting and those that uh, were there to watch. And um, a lot of nice calves. So uh, I don't think we've ever hosted one before. So uh, I commend those that uh, uh, did so uh, in our Lincoln County um, 4-H. Uh, membership that uh, went above and beyond to make this a successful event. So uh, I'm certain that probably we'll do it again next year. So anyway, any other commissioners reporting? Do we have an executive session, Drew? No. Okay. Well, then I guess I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Move so, to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. Motion by Aaron. Second by Landine. Any discussion? Not call the roll, please. Commissioner Aarons? Yes. Landine? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Jibben? Yes. Motion carried. We are adjourned.